Welcome to the Dice Box and the Fixers, which is um, my uh, Scion uh, old card mishmash gone potentially horribly, horribly wrong. But I'm going to try it anyway, because it sounds like okay. fun. Um, this is our Session Zero, which is basically uh, letting everybody get a little bit of a feel for their characters, uh, me setting up the world a little bit, because... Obviously, given some of the situations that I've set up for this one, including a couple of uh, old guard style mechanics for getting these guys through combat without an actual healer, um, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting ride. So, okay, your your situation is it's kind of here and now with obvious fantasy uh, diversions from the status quo, but. Uh, Y'all are effectively, as far as you can tell, at least for the moment, uh, immortals. Two of you do not know why. You just don't die. Two of you probably don't care all that much. The one of you who has some idea of why they might be that way... Grumble, probably, because... Yeah, there, there's reasons for the grumbling. Um, so, basically... Y'all have been crossing in each other's orbits for a while. Um, I mean, uh, Syrian and Ketty have known each other for quite some time. Uh, Ketty kind of tripped over her when uh, something went drastically, drastically wrong. She got hung for her crimes and woke up in a body pit with this one going, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and several centuries later, uh, met up with this doofus somewhere, somewhere around Midtown New York in the middle of some of the uh, Revolutionary War fighting. A um, little bit surprised to hear that much southern accent in a in a rebel coat, but hey, <laughs> why he's in New York? But uh, yeah, you sort of sort of pulled him out of a bit of a massacre when that fight was going uh, not so great because it didn't go so great in New York for a while, if if memory serves me correctly. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, Mostly you two were there, uh, Su Yin, because, you know, yeah, there was some interesting shit happening around her old stomping grounds at the time, but, you know, they kind of know me there right now, so I need to be uh, across the ocean from that mess, thanks very much. And Keti was just like, well, it looks interesting, and Dad probably... I hate that he wants me there, and I hate that I'm going anyway, but fuck it. It's going to be interesting, and there'll be stories, and... Oh, hey, there's a giant man-shaped brick wall that looks kind of like Thor, really. Poke, poke, poke. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, look, he's not dead anymore. Great. <laughs> but after after about that, the last couple of centuries have been... Um, Occasionally meeting up for... Sometimes you just run into each other because the world works that way, but oftentimes, particularly since uh, technology is picked up, um, you've all had dealings with uh, not so much individuals as kind of an organization that for a variety of reasons you've come to trust, not least which being that it's become increasingly harder to hide over the last few centuries, and you get the feeling they've been around for a very long time in one form or another. Ketty can confirm that when you talk about it over drinks, which you probably have a few times, because having somebody turn up to you with messenger birds, telegrams, doesn't matter where you are, they find you! And let you know that, you know, there, there's a job. It is relevant to your interests. It pays well. And you'll be working with some familiar people. 
because let's face it, in a world of mayflies, familiar faces that you don't have to hide from are kind of good to have. <clears throat> the call that you get around the start of the 21st century sends you to a place that you guys know in Morocco. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not it's not the fanciest. It's basically a forgotten bit of digs, but it's the kind of place that you guys normally start out from anyway, because it's not like you guys can sign a rental agreement. But usually, when you're sent to those places, you find that they're moderately well furnished, and someone will turn up when you all get there. And, you know, you have enough money and fake IDs to get more or less to where you need to be getting. So, yeah. I mean, if you if you want to think about where you might have been and what you might have been doing somewhere around, like, 2005. Oh, jeez, what was happening in 2005? Not... The, compar so comparatively not that much. Look, it <laughs> seems like a long time ago for you, and in ways it seems like a long time ago for me, but in another way it seems like no time at fucking all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But honestly, not that much. We were, we, were, we were more or less just ticking along, really. Mm -hmm. There was nothing... There was nothing historically truly significant happening at that point. For once, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 for for you guys, it's like this entire decade is dead, <laughs> and not even that thing with the computers happened the way anyone thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, Ketty, at the very least, probably knows that the main reason it didn't was because people actually listened to the <laughs> copious warnings. So yeah, honestly, not all that much was happening in in the early two thousands. So this this was your rest time. It's part of why I picked that kind of segment. Mm -hmm. Good point. It's much easier to fit to uh, those smaller things that the newspapers overlook into quiet decades. <laughs> <laughs> So come on, Ethan. What would what would what would Himbo, who's like, wow, look look at look at all the fancy. Yeah, well, uh, definitely. Well, probably my guy was uh, truthfully spending most of his time, uh, probably in actually in New York City, um, just sort of about of nostalgia, um, just sort of walking around, you know, mostly Midtown, <laughs> just just sort of. Comparing, you know, and then and also making a point of taking in every bit of tr the the, mo the the trashiest movies he can find. Mm. That's, been, that's been his thing is just he's 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 not good for highbrow entertainment. So to to, to be fair, wasn't that about the start of the uh, the the superhero movie renaissance? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, yeah. it would have been Iron Man and all that other. Yeah. So you know, he's taking and, and all that and just and yeah, he's a big comic book reader because hey, it's. Pictures and simple, <laughs> and so you know. I'm prob probably looking at Captain America and just going, "Ha!" <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah, go, trust me. If we get to the point where that movie came out, he'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just, just, uh, and helping out there, you know, just helping out here and there whenever where he can, but not, not doing, not anything major. Just you know. Yeah. And, but most, of course, his his predominant problem and something that he's probably never actually considered, although Ketty probably tried to warn him in the 90s, um, is that it, it's probably not wise to wander around places where people are pointing that much cell phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And all, those well, fucking no things have cameras now. Well, not to mention just all the surveillance cameras in New York City. 
Period. Uh, I'm so. I'm no. I'm sorry. Compared to London, you guys are rank fucking amateurs. Mm-hmm. I got no, yeah, nothing. On this London. is true. But yeah. But yeah, he 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 gets the message by surprisingly pigeon because he probably doesn't carry a cell phone. He probably tried once. Sat on it. Yeah, <laughs> and he wasn't using it for very much anyway. It was just the how hard do I press crunch? Crap. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh, and that's not even getting into the flip phone. That was a Kiravesti. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> so yeah, he gets because he, he's probably he's probably living in one of those little places that's somewhere between tenement and squat. And on his windowsill is Pigeon. With note tied to its leg. Roy? No. Oh, no. Ah, hell. Open the window. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, and it, it gives... It gives... It, basically, what it gives you is... There's also a key, because you're you and you're kind of dumb. So, uh, you know. Basically, what it gives you is, um, you know, luggage locker at Grand Central, which is what that key opens, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yep. And in there, you'll find, um, uh, yeah, you know, you'll find your, your tickets and a little bit of local currency, because God forbid you ever try to do, uh, you, you try to do currency conversion. You, you, you. It, it frustrated you badly enough when various merchants would only take British money because British money was dumber <laughs> then than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> so the the concept of like all these countries with all their currency, you, you just kind of went <laughs> most of the time. Can I just lob a hunk of gold in your head? <laughs> <laughs> You probably tried that once in the early 1800s and then had to leave for about five years to avoid uh, to avoid a manslaughter charge. <laughs> Ketty had a lot of fun herding Rafe in the in the mm. early 1800s. So yeah, uh, so Rafe is coming in from Midtown Manhattan. Suyin. I would have been faffing about somewhere in Hong Kong, generally being bored and enjoying actually good tea of various oh, flavors. Oh, that's one thing that was a pretty big deal around <laughs> about the turn of the millennium. Because all of a sudden, Hong Kong was no longer a British colony. So that was around the point that China was starting to get its claws back into it. So you so Su Yin was seeing the start of China's being China at Hong Kong. I like this place back when it. Now that it's got like, because I was enjoying the whole general freedom from Britain for that duration between like the 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 like the, in the, the 90s basic basically the tra- basically the transition period. You were enjoying the transition they- period, but then it started getting. CCP poking at the side and went why don't you just break again <laughs> you should you know, just ranting about China shattering every every few every few like centuries or decades or whatever you're getting some looks from people that <laughs> The, the, the... What? I read history. <laughs> mm-hmm. I him... like his... Give him both the give him the finger and walk <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Suyin probably does actually carry a phone and just gets yeah text. some Nokia monstrosity or BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, so just gets a text. Um... Yeah, even even in even in two thousand five, Blackberries were starting to get a little passe, but okay. 
Oh, well, that's what that's right about. I, I actually went and Googled the damn thing. That's what the most popular phones were. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, no, just a, a text with uh, flight booking details. And uh, they, they trust you to deal with local currency. Yeah, and this, and the, the swearing has veered through like 15 different dialects <laughs> over the course of the last 20 minutes. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Apart from Rafe, who does not have the int score for it, the rest of you, the main reason I didn't deal with languages is because, again, apart from Rafe, you've got basically all of them. <laughs> Rafe's got English, some French, and a little bit of Spanish. Because your your allies through the Revolutionary War period were France and Spain. And then, of course, you had the whole issue where uh, you were probably involved in some of the Manifest Destiny expansion bullshit. And probably going, why are you treating these people so awfully? They got here for... Wait, what are you doing? Ah! <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of running going on in that time period. <laughs> <laughs> How many times would you have interfered and Percy gets to get shot for it? <laughs> <laughs> but to, to be fair, he probably had a great time of, of, during during the Civil War because he was he was oh, always yeah. he was always really big on emancipation anyway. So oh yeah, it was, it was that just was a grand time. And you you see you see Mr. Southerner uh, turning up against uh, turning up against some of his so uh, old uh, you know old farm buddies, some of those plantation owners, and just going. Hey, you remember when you started a fist fight with me about that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, so, memories. <laughs> so yes, uh, Ketty. What what is Ketty doing in the early two thousands? Ketty has been relaxing by backpacking across Europe, pretending to be an off year student, playing music at bars. <laughs> wandering around uh, just trying to figure out how the, the f yeah I think I think I think the best way um of of getting Kati the information he needs to be heading in in a Morocco ish sort of direction is turning up at the backpackers hostel that you've been staying in because that's where off your students tend to stay when they're backpacking across Europe mm -hmm. um and that uh, that 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 pretty girl at reception that you've been half-heartedly flirting with because this feels an awful lot like what happened with your mom and dad and you really don't want to follow in your father's footsteps <laughs> but she's cute um and you basically sort of uh she just hands you an envelope um i mean very good very old style paper and in that is your uh, your plane tickets and where you need to be in in Morocco, so. And that definitely gets a look to her. <laughs> uh, when, to be fair, when you give looks to people, there's a certain amount of meep. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was in, in, in your pigeonhole. Ah, yes, yes. I was... I was expecting this. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Still looking at you a little nervously, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, at least if you're backpacking, there's not a whole lot to, uh, not a whole lot to pack up. So, nope. Okay, given Morocco, Hong Kong, New York, Ketty would actually get there first. So you know he, he he gets to kind of settle in. It's it's not a bad little spot. It's uh, it's a it's an open plan room, but with privacy screens. So you're you're basically expected to stay there for at least a night. Uh, there's there when when Ketty arrives, there's three beds, uh, no kitchen, but you know table and some some comfy chairs. Somebody has brought in a. Probably quite expensive for the time, f small flat screen TV, the kind of thing we'd think of as pretty average right about now, but that was 15 years ago, so. Mm -hmm. 
but it's it's flat screen enough technology that somebody could move it in on their own. There's no sign of anyone else yet. And probably it'd be... Funnily enough, it'd probably actually be Suryin next, because I have a feeling there's some connecting flight shit that would have to go on for uh, for Rafe, so... Which would involve a whole lot of... <laughs> and, 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 and somewhat smitten um, airport stuff going, um, can I help? you sir it's just sort of the oh no he's hot <laughs> reactions from all of them <laughs> um i need to get and like here <laughs> uh, <I'm just> like, <laughs> i need to get here i think that's the, <laughs> is that the ending uh, why do they make these so complicated <laughs> it's, it, and it did eventually you yeah you you to be fair they probably arranged a much later connecting flight because they know you're going to have a problem finding your gate. So yes, it's it's Suyin that comes in next as Ketty is dropping a backpack and looking around like, oh, we're back on our bullshit again. <laughs> so and, yeah, and is so by by yeah by by all means describe yourselves because you know you guys know what you look like so. To my out of character chagrin, he probably looks like a hipster. <laughs> got the beard. He's got a beard. He's got not a man, not a man bun, but he, you know, it's, <laughs> it's long. Oh no! Trend setting ten years ahead of the hipsters. Let's be fair. Hip hipsters were around long before there was a name for hipsters. <laughs> but yeah. otherwise, pretty standard. Modern clothing, he's adjusted well with that much. Well, be, be, be barred, he would, yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he, he probably looks like a somewhat avant garde hipster backpacker. <laughs> so, pretty <laughs> yes. damn, pretty damn standard. I mean, Su Yin's seen that kind of, uh, that kind of individual. Although usually they're they're Americans um, heading for places like Koh Samui. But you know, you know Ketty well enough to know, nah. So, uh, in meanwhile, Su Yin. Looking for all the world like a military brat. <laughs> so, cargo, so, cargo pants, camo of all things, and a black t-shirt. Inside of that, just... Asian mix of a person. Yeah, Ni so. hao, boyo. <laughs> Ketty nods very knowingly, with smiles a bit. Probably oh, chilling on the couch, waiting. I'm uh, checking the strings on his. Uh, Whatever instrument he has, a, a lyre, I think. He has, he has a lyre, a guitar, and a flute. Uh, the flute is probably the oldest of them, um, just because, you know, the, that's a more solid instrument, so. So, I get the beard. Was the bun necessary? He, t he said not a man bun. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Like all like halfway like he's he the way best way I got got from that was like halfway to one. Yeah. Okay. Probably should be tying it back, but it just kind of lets it hang. Like was was the hair necessary? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should see how they used to wear it. <laughs> To be fair, and Ketty knows this. That mostly, uh, you know, if you want, if you want to talk about you know long hair needing to be tied up in buns, she's like fifteenth century China. What do you think their <laughs> men did? 
So yeah, hello, you're, Ms. You're hello, Ms. Ms. hello, Ms. Hello, Miss Hypocrite is, is mm-hmm. part of Ketty's uh, reaction to this whole thing. I'd imagine because he's yeah, been she's he, more confused by either beard or that. Why both? <laughs> he's definitely kept the beard over the years. <laughs> Well, you know, if if you if you if you've got the facial hair and you like the facial hair, you keep the facial hair. Why not? <laughs> and rather than sitting on the couch normally, I'm going to flop and rotate until I'm upside down on the thing. Christ, you really are playing me, Shay. It's disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see that you're raring to go, Suyin. I mean. Things were fun, but former places of residence getting more than a little grab handsy is starting to make me wor- I'm starting to get worrying. So I uh, <laughs> got out of dodge before the cameras caught on. I'm glad to hear that. Give it a while. There's going to be cameras in literally everything, everywhere, forever. Times change, but not as much as you might think. People like their cameras. How is this at all incorrect? <laughs> <laughs> Less about the cameras and more about the people. Fair. So if it's one and two and... Any idea where number three is? Uh, I expect we'll hear him soon enough. Uh, We roll the hand of fate, and it turns out Rafe does not get too lost in Morocco. (laughs) 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 He does does go entirely down the the wrong side street and gets uh, offered various things that he's not entirely sure what they were offering him, but, uh... They were gracious when I said, nah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you I'm do... I'm not, not exactly sure what that meant, what that word means, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, eventually, you know, as, as, as... You do, you do hear, the. You know, Six foot four. To be fair, he's he's not undexterous. It's just that he's a six. I don't care really right now. He's so a, he, sort of... he's a, he's a, he's a six foot four walking chunk of beef, frankly. <laughs> so yeah, door opens and big, <laughs> big dude. Big stompy boots, um, like, but not like. What did I like, tell you, Sunya? <laughs> not like club stompy. We're talking like, like, like hiking boot stompy. Um, jeans, t-shirt, flannel for days. <laughs> you know, oh, you is nice. <laughs> this angle. <sighs> Immediately <laughs> starts turning red. Just goes eh, waves. Look, sees Kenny. Like, yeah, boss. <laughs> and uh, uh, and you're, you're kind, you kind of don't have room on sofa because there's Ketty and there's upside down Sian, but there's a couple of armchairs. Yeah, and they just sort of stomp, you know, not really stomps, but just sort of schleps on over to the to the chair and just poof. And it's only then that he's like, I guess I could have brought some stuff with me. Oops. Oh well. I knew I forgot something. Oh god, I just have this image of his luggage still being on the luggage carousel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, I left it. <laughs> I gotta go back to the airport at some point. <laughs> I left my stuff. I didn't leave all my stuff. I mean, you've you've got you've got your backpack, your your yeah. carry on, but uh... I got my carry on with my with my actual kit, but my clothes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, 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 uh, boss, I kind of left my clothes at the. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ketty and Sian is looking at him right now. <laughs> I was in a hurry. 
And you know how I get when I'm in a hurry. Just sort of just just and just face palming. <laughs> Still upside down. <laughs> yep. Well, <laughs> What can I say? After this many centuries, there's a few things ain't changed. This <laughs> man, these two probably start chuckling at this many <laughs> centuries. <laughs> for you, for you, it's been like what two? <laughs> I mean, well, these two are like to have these kids. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yes. I'm just waiting to see if conversation will happen. Conversation is good. Well, what are you two been up to? I like Hong Kong. I want Hong Kong to stay Hong Kong. I didn't know they were changing the name. <laughs> well, to be fair, you, you you had you had New Amsterdam for a while. Exactly. That's why it's for it's like what what are they changing it to? Not changing the name. It's just trading hands in the most awkward way possible. Catty, oh, Ketty, best way, best way to, uh, best way to explain it to Rafe. It's like if America gave New York back to the British. Hmm. Oh, uh, Rafe. Imagine if, at this moment, New York was being given to the British. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now what? A number of complicated legacies at hand, but oh. flags have a habit of changing. Okay. Uh, which, at this point, he, he, he's, he's not that dumb. He would no, remember like, the, the, the anti-British sentiment and be like... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. And he probably knows enough about the British in that time to know that that's not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Labour was in power at that time and it wasn't as bad as it could be. But, you know. Yeah. But for him, it's like at the very least that queen doesn't really have a whole lot to to you know, to do with anything, and most mostly they just talk about what happened with the the that prince's wife and and wait a minute, didn't they didn't 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 somebody abdicate over what this Charles dude is trying to do? <laughs> wow, the world changes. <laughs> Oh god, Rafe reads the tabloids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah. It's about the only thing it's about the only news he can actually understand. Everything else they start using too many words and he's just <laughs> sort of I wasn't doing much, I was just hanging out in Manhattan. It's different. Saw some good movies though. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Which ones? Well, there was the one with the guy, and he went pew, pew, pew. And, and, oh, and, and, God, and, Revenge of the Sith came out in 2005. Batman Begins. Yep. And then there was the, and the, guy, the guy with the, the thing, and the team. Yeah, oh, man, yeah. Oh, dear God, V for Vendetta came out yeah. as well. <laughs> Serenity. <laughs> They could I have done better knife work with V, I think. I saw the one with the guy with the thing, but uh, uh, I don't... It, it, it also, Guy Fox was it. hilarious. <laughs> oh, my name is John Johnson, famous doer of job at place. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of my aliases. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, they usually make better. Uh, they usually make better aliases for him than that. He re he suggested it once, and uh, the the contacts. The look I got, that... Yeah, the the look I got was like <laughs> made even made even as big as he is. Just kind of go, oh, okay, sorry. 
To be fair, the the one one individual in like the late seventies did it once. <laughs> because it was funny. <laughs> yeah, that that was a that was an awkward year. <laughs> And I still have some very colorful, yet very, very hazy memories of the early 60s. <laughs> uh, Mid-60s. Early 60s was still the tail end of... Uh, mo most of the really weird shit didn't start happening until 66. Well, like I said, hazy and... <laughs> he thinks he still thinks it's, it's the, the early, early 60s. It early 60s. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was later. <laughs> he just... that His sense of time during that period kind of went like this. <laughs> <laughs> For a good year or two, but maybe. To, to, He's still not sure. Yeah, to to be fair, for for the sixties, it was probably like five. Sixty six was delicious. Your head is full of cats. <laughs> 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 I'm not even sure what that means, but it's still hysterical. <laughs> it's okay. Neither am I. <laughs> and Ketty gets to avoid telling what he did on his summer vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, magnetically attract anyone with that delightful hairpiece? <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the hair thank you very much oh baby <laughs> I'm sorry I'm loving this every time I hey you're like you just lose it <laughs> no, it's 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 basically everything building itself into yeah. It's it's watching Su Yin be built one brick of of various of my more sarky characters at a time. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> He's seen so many iterations of Miche. <laughs> Ah, okay. Up to and including the early Mollies. He probably knows more about the original Molly than you two do. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's gonna have some fun with that. So yeah, Ketty is turning his eyes to Valhalla or wherever Dad mm. is at the moment and going, why? <laughs> <laughs> What's the job, boss? We have yet to receive it, but I expect they will not keep us waiting. Okay. <laughs> of course, they might just to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> the few times they did, I got bored, and what happens when I get bored? Yes, well, let's not start a revolution this time. <laughs> It was only a small one. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's not like it was my first. I don't think it was any of yours first. <laughs> we should have gone to Peru. I don't know why. <laughs> I got nostalgic, though. Oh, well. Uh, as uh, as 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 Rafe is reminiscing in his slightly dopey, way. <laughs> slightly dopey way, there's a very quiet tap 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 on the door. It's not a dragon gate. You're allowed to come on through. Door opens and uh, in steps. Uh, for Ketty and Suyin, um, it's 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 easy to tell uh, more specific racial features. Um, this, this is a very small young woman of Korean descent. All that Rafe knows is kind of from around Suyin's area, but not Suyin's area exactly. So 
a thing. Um, jeans, uh, white tank top, uh, Rafe's luggage. <laughs> ah! Uh, someone got actually sent and found it. And, uh, um, and a fair-sized backpack that seems to be her own. Um, I was, uh, set to keep an eye on the airport to see when you arrived. Uh, I was told to pay particular attention to the baggage carousel because one of you was entirely likely to completely forget that they had luggage until they got to a place where they were like, right, need to pick up my, oh. Mm. I'm sorry. But thank you very much. I, I'm, just walks over, gets it, <laughs> sits back down, just, I just, I inconvenienced someone and I shouldn't have, and now I'm appropriately, what's the word? Um, um, out of character. I completely lost the actual word. No, that's <laughs> it's okay. Not, we're, it's we're, something else. That's, 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 anyway. a, that's okay. We're, we're leaving it that way because it's far more in character for uh, for for Rafe to uh, not have the word. And she's not helping. She's just, it's okay. It's all right. Um, <clears throat> I do also have a few other uh, bits and pieces as a sort of a Welcome back to the area. I know you've been through here before. Um, puts down the backpack, opens it up, and there's, in front of each of you, she puts three sort of styrofoamy meal boxes and uh, bottles in, uh, well, to be fair, in the case of Suyin and uh, Keti, it's more clay bottles and actual glass anything. Um, Rafe is actually the easiest individual to deal with this from because this is this is you know 19th century 18th century ish southern cuisine. This is, is exactly the kind of thing that he'd uh, he'd have had when uh, when he was growing up. Uh, just, just simple damn farm food. Um, for Su Yin, um, there's a, effectively it's a char siu bao, but made as it would have been when she was still, like, normal. <laughs> and rice wine that doesn't Ooh. taste of the kinds of preservatives that you would normally, well, that she would normally notice in it today. Keti... Um, how they managed the kind and style of bread, sausage, and cheese they had in your day, and mead the same. You have no idea how they managed this, but they, they did not fake this. You cannot fake this. Somebody apparently made this shit from scratch to be Viking compliant. <laughs> And then just sort of, uh, she, 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 she has not, she has not sat down or anything. She just set everything down and, uh, compliments of the management. Well, if we are starting with dinner, are you going to join us? Um, I yeah, pull up a chair and I'm rotating and I'm finally rotating back into verticality. And sits very, very demurely. Um, on, uh, yeah, on basically on the very edge of one of the chairs. This, this is the primest and properest of prim and proper individuals. I don't want to overburden you while you're uh, eating. There is, uh, admittedly, at least in part, I'm trying to make sure I got everything right. So, uh, by all means, um, you can call me Kim, by the way. Your creations, these, huh? Um, I, that's part of what I do. I'm, uh, uh, sort of the resident historian. 
and right. gift you probably, have. probably around a mouthful of something. <laughs> brave is like <laughs> cornbread. In 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 that case, yeah, it's yeah, just... be like a half mouthful of cornbread. So it's kind of like in the size. It, it's perfect. <laughs> and you're wasting some of it by spilling crumbs all over everything by talking with your mouthful. Oh, in a word. <laughs> All of this, you included, delicious and fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you you haven't you haven't had you haven't had bow that hasn't involved that processed flour crap for centuries. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with a coffee. It's amazing what you can do with a coffee grinder. I think you just went up a level. Okay. So, yes, I hope your trips were uneventful. I'm just going to look at Rafe. <laughs> well, I mean, nothing happened. I just needed some help to get my connecting flight. They make the things so complicated now. Lost. I just didn't know where to go. I wasn't lost. I was exactly where I should have been. Well, in general. Any fun buildings? No. Huh? What What happened was he had to take a connecting flight. And coming out of Bordeaux and um, he got a little lost in the airport. We're just kind of grateful that we didn't send him uh, by a connecting flight to London because more than likely he would have had to transfer airports. And Can you imagine him trying to get from Heathrow to Gatwick and then trying to find his gate? <laughs> he would have wound uh, up in like Liverpool. That. I think it would have been lucky to wind up in Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, the other option is... You probably would have got on the wrong flight and ended up in Reykjavik. <laughs> More than likely. Not that there's anything wrong with Reykjavik. It's very nice at the right time of yeah, year, is. but uh, uh, not where he's needed at the moment. Uh, incidentally, um, Mr. Ellison, I'm going to have to ask you to be a little bit more careful if you're wandering around tourist destinations in future. I had to edit 3,952 Facebook pictures. Sorry. It's you see part of the problem is you look like a taller Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> oh. And to be fair, even if Chris Hemsworth wasn't going up in the world and so far as fame went, he's a very attractive man. So. Blush. <laughs> 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 yes, so you see, you, you wound up with a terrible lot of people who have been um, trying to find you to see if you're single. <laughs> Many of them wanted to lick him. 398. Wow, you, you count? Wow. And he's turning colors. Like, he's basically <laughs> this now. <laughs> At this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a very uh, analytical mind. I'll stay out of New York for a while. Long while. Avoid Los Angeles. For at least the next 20, 30 years. Oh. <laughs> Actually, probably longer, because once Chris Hemsworth gets older... 
they are going to need a new one. <laughs> oh. I'm not I'm not so dumb I, I don't know that that's a bad idea. Maybe maybe Reykjavik would be a good place for you for the next little while. Yeah, or or at least maybe it's been a while since I went through Sweden. Or was that Switzerland? I get him confused. <laughs> um either way there was a lot of snow. Reykjavik has snow, lots of it. Mm hmm You need to be a little bit out of the public eye for a little while. Just a little I can while. Do that. I can do that. Please prove it. <laughs> also, please stop turning around to she, and also please, please stop starting fights about history and politics in bars. I think that's the first time that I've not been, <laughs> been scolded about that. You, you've, you've been, you've been mostly doing them in the continental United States, where they are quite common fights like that. Um, oh, eight hundred and forty-two complaints. Fifty-three of those should have start ended in your arrest. In eight different countries. <laughs> wow, Shirley and Uncles need to take a chill pill or fifty. You respond to people telling you to stop ranting at the top of your lungs by giving them the finger and occasionally glassing them in the face. Oh, but fair number of them did deserve a bottle to the head. There are laws. There are. It just looks at Ketty with this sort of... Ketty Help just me. smiles. <laughs> if you're going to travel internationally instead of living in a cave where no one can see you. You need to learn the laws of the land so I don't have to... I and people like me, because this is my first year assigned to you people. Put it to you this way. I, I, I've been made very well aware of your history. I'm 23. You're doing quite well so far, Miss Kim. <clears throat> I'll... Learn the laws. The internet is wonderful about that. But as a general rule, how about take differences of opinion do not need to end in bloodshed. Okay, fine. They'll get more choices than the two. Uh, but also, Mr. Ellison, please, uh, if you could possibly refrain from, um, going into bars deliberately to start fights. Okay. I mean, if they happen, they happen. At least you're only, and I say only using fists, but I guess you haven't been um, fists, chairs, uh, that bit where you uh, were wielding the bartender yeah. like a cudgel was, uh, was, was kind of inspired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. she, 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 oh. she, and there was that, there was that one in the eighties when they had, they had the, the, the table with the lights or not or the, the, the game and whew, that was heavy. <laughs> she actually pulls out a, a, a laptop quite, quite streamlined for the time and just uh, opens it and uh, clicks on a video. And it is basically a montage of uh, 
Rayford Ellison's uh, greatest bar <laughs> brawl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally greatest hits. <laughs> On the one hand, he's like, "Oh, that was a," good... and then realizing, yeah, back, and back, then reading the room and being like, "Oh." Back background, but she has actually set it to background music. Mama said, "Knock you out." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, like an Elvis' greatest hits montage, but better. Uh, well, I'm just kind of. I won't go in. I won't allowed. start. I will not start a fight deliberately anymore. You are very good and new, and I will try to not be such a. Well, for lack of a better way to put it, pain in the ass. The thing is, is that you being a hothead, we understand and expect. So if a fight finds you, again, at least if a fight finds you, you stick to blunt force trauma. But going into bars where you know a fight will find you. You are not overburdened with education, but you do have common sense enough to know. All right. Don't, don't bait the racists. They will find you, and when they do, cry havoc Smash. and cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Smash. It, <laughs> okay. It's a it's a it, it's Shakespeare for smash. Okay. You missed Shakespeare. Yeah. I tried to read some once. It, I, I got about three pages and lost it. But there was a movie that was really good with, uh, I think they can't, I think I heard somewhere they were going to make him in the next, in the next movie with the guy in the, in the wings. Well, they weren't wings, they were cape. And, and they're going to put him in the next one. But yeah, no, there was a mo there was one they did. It was supposed to be Shakespeare. It wasn't Shakespeare, but it kind of was. It was really good. Rummages pulls out a DVD of the Baz Luhrmann Romeo and Juliet. I will leave this and my laptop. Watch it. Boss, can you help me? Wait yes, up. of course. Okay. I had a phone once and it wasn't good. So I'm not going to... Boss can do that. You've had 28 separate phones. <laughs> the longest lasting one was eight days. Hey! I made it a week! And then you uh, were celebrating the fact that you made it a week, uh, juggled it, and it went into the Thames, if I remember correctly. Oh! Oh, that one! Oh, I like the color of that one. Oh, well. I'm not good with fun. I'm not good with technology. I'm sorry. That, that's that's quite all right. Do you have do you have you have some individuals that can handle that, and the rest of the time you can just be a luddite. No, not even because luddites don't like it. Um, honestly, there isn't a word yet for what you are. Maybe one day there will be. It's not a bad word. But there needs to be a word for big, Inept. big, sweet, and dumb as a rock. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the description Dad used to use. It's one of the few things I still remember. So a beach boy or a bimbo or something like that? Bimbos are women, apparently. I guess that would be himbo? It'll never catch on, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, anyone who says a bimbo is only a girl can just take an entire bottle up the and no, just inappropriate more. <laughs> no more bottles in places. You do enough of that already. Again, do you have any idea how many different places that we've had to clean up for you? Now that I'm sorry about. You see, that's why we ask you not to. I mean, honestly, some of these people probably do deserve it, but we can't afford you to be in the system. You can't afford to be in the system. The more you call the system to you, 
the harder you make our job. I mean, we've had we've had benefactors investing in things to fund this operation for centuries. Probably millennia. But it's still, it's harder work every year. With the advances in technology. That's part of why the meeting, in fact, the, the actual job is going to be tomorrow. I admit I arrange this a little early, A, to let you get settled, because I know that you've been traveling for a while, particularly Mr. Uh, Odinson, who's been very well behaved, um, even, even in Amsterdam. We're a little impressed at how well you managed to cover your own tracks in Amsterdam. Mm. Mm. Well, the next time you are in Amsterdam, I might actually ask you to bring some of the good stuff. Um, I follow. I've I've spent the last year sweeping up your virtual footprints in the sand, and it's kind of wearing. So yes, actually, um. You know. It'll be the least I can do. <laughs> it's it 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 would be nice. I'll to... help so long as I don't break anything doing it. Uh, it or anyone. In any case, part of it was uh, part of it was to let you settle in and uh, get yourselves reacquainted. I imagine the couple of decades that you've been uh, off doing your own things uh, means that you probably need to get yourselves a little bit more reacquainted. But also, um, I wanted to have this conversation because a couple of you have not been being careful. And whether it's brash or not overburdened with education, I need you to understand that if you don't know the rules and you can't find out the rules because you keep breaking all the technology that you could use to look them up, you might need to stick around with somebody who can look them up and actually cares. Which leaves you out. <laughs> Looking at Su Yin, because you don't really care apart from the inconvenience. Let me tell yeah. you, let me tell you a Filipino jail would have been an inconvenience. <laughs> yeah, because French prison was not fun. But you see, they have Interpol now. And we don't need to be pinballed from one prison to another to another. Just be grateful that I um am very, very good at my job. Uh, um, but yeah, I'd very much appreciate it if you would make my job a little easier. Let's work together so that I can focus more of my energies on helping you find the kinds of jobs that will keep you going and keep you in management's good graces and less time invested in keeping you off the grid. I can swing that. Does anyone have any um, breakfast preferences? Because we couldn't quite get you anywhere with the kitchen. Whatever's local. Oh, uh, what boss said. Let's make that three. Sounds like a sound bet. Eh, not making, not making overuse of my, uh, my various uh, skills and talents in the kitchen, but I did, and rummages in the bag again, and um, it's. Uh, Basically, again, we're, we're, we're into desserts, which are suited to time period and uh, region of birth. Again, Rafe is easier, you know, Rafe, we can, Rafe, we can just give, like, cake of some description. Well, 
but you know there 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 is a certain type of honey cake that's uh, more or less a Viking. You get this on special occasions thing that mm. you didn't even think anyone knew how to make anymore. Mm. <laughs> Book. There are advantages to growing up with the internet. <clears throat> I'll let you uh, get settled in. Um, and be by in the morning with breakfast. Were there any other uh, questions? Anything anyone needs? Uh, I'm I'm here to run errands. I'm basically consider me liaison secretary. Very well, thank you. So, do you need anything? Not yet, but I'll let you know if anything comes to mind. The text Suyin. That's my number if you need anything, day or night. Well, night, obviously, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and be the first I call. Gives a little bow. And I'll try not to arrive too early. I know it's probably not a problem for some of you, but do you still wind up with jet lag? Rafe kind of still, Rafe kind of still does. Pro I was about to say, looks to Rafe. Uh, it, 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 the, that kind of, you know, full on everything gets fixed is still a little beyond uh, Rafe. The way I figure it is, the big stuff, the wounds, etc., comes pretty much right away. But the level of, you know, resetting your body clock takes more than a couple of centuries to properly do, and. Uh, you know, the, the sheer level of control of reducing exhaustion levels hasn't come to Rafe yet. He can do a lot of things with his body, but currently his brain thinks it's like... Later, to be fair. So he's, he's, he's kind of dragging a little bit. You're muted. That's probably why he seems even more not with it than usual. <laughs> And yeah, so he will probably, after, assuming he's finished his meal, he's probably gonna. Well, he's grab he's, his... yeah, he's he's probably dozing off a little bit in his chair as mm -hmm. Ketty Ket looks over to. Ah. Yeah, he's, he's just sort of. I mean, well, I actually thought of a request. Mm -hmm. One, just one. Lapsang Su Chong. Actually, rummages in the bag. And... There's a kettle in the corner, and holds out a. And it's it's not it's not boxed or bags, it's tin. I love you, okay? We've been uh, this is a hereditary assignment. I'm just the first that's actually been in the field. Um my family's apparently been growing that on behalf of you, basically, since around when you activated, for lack of a better word. So it's actually from a strain that you would be familiar with. Again, I love you. Period. And this stands up and gives a bow. And honestly, we've. I'm probably the first that's actually decided to use that kind of thing as more than a bribe. <laughs> Um, you've you've never needed the bribery, and it seemed a shame to waste the work. But I've been trained to provide you with some comforts of your origins. The world may move on, but that doesn't mean you need to forget everything about who, what, and where you are. Fourth, 400 AD cuisine is fascinating, by the way. I'm glad to hear that. But, uh, uh Mr. Ellison, did you, <clears throat> did you, <throat> did you need anything? Um, sleep, but aside from that, I, I don't know. I think I have everything. 
thank you for my stuff. I'm sorry to put you through the trouble, and I'll try to do better. It's all right, but just keep in mind because you you slept through this. Um, I keep a, a supply of various bits and pieces that uh, are kept and developed from when and where you grew up. That's why that. So, honestly, if tastes of home, uh, uh, Suyin can explain the the depth of that. And if you think of anything, she can text me. To which point, stands up, smooths out her jeans a little bit, gives a bow, and exits. So yeah, you you still got Suyin holding this tin like yee. Ah. <laughs> mm. uh... I'm going to get some sleep. It's later. <laughs> Wait. It's not, but it is. I'm going to get some sleep. Get you a nap? Well, not so much a nap. He's probably going to crash out until morning, but he's going to be up way before you guys. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Rafe usually operates on farm hours some anyway. Some Get you some Z's and I'm gonna get you some tea. I'm rattling tin. <laughs> just with this look of absolute fucking delight. Let's just say that running into people who may or may not have been responsible for this stuff getting around back when was so much fun then and getting it now was even more fun. Katie's probably heard the story of, of of various bits of piracy that got her those a few a few times, <laughs> but it's yeah. still it's still always fun. Rafe probably mm. hasn't yet or doesn't remember and is too jet lagged to care, but we can cover that uh, come morning and technically after break when I let you guys settle in a bit more into an in character thing. Though that you've got some idea of what your dynamic is and find out what your job is supposed to be. So, see you in a few minutes. And we're back. Um, this bunch have uh, come in from their various points uh, around the world. Um, gone to a, a little hidey hole of a room in Morocco. Um, and Rafe, after having his surprisingly down-home Breakfast is just kind of uh, crashed out. Thump. <laughs> uh, Yin probably stayed up a while brewing her uh, Lapsang Chukong and uh, enjoying it immensely because it really does taste like it. It is perfect, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. It <laughs> just. And because its source involved a bunch of bandits trogdooring a place, it's just that extra bit of nostalgia for setting <laughs> things on fire. <laughs> and, you know, morning happens, uh, Rafe is probably up before the pair of you. Just being like, you know, just opens eyes, bip, hello. <laughs> yeah, like I said, he, he operates on farm hours in general, and he went to bed way before everybody else did, so... But he yeah. probably did sleep a little bit longer, so... His his body oh, clock yeah. will adjust quicker than, say, ours does, but that mm -hmm. doesn't stop the jet lag part from happening, particularly after yeah. a day of running around airports going, Help! <laughs> <laughs> Literally. At, various, at some point, he just sort of yeah. stood there going and saying that, yes. Which is, you know, when, when helpful, helpful uh, airport stuff going... Pretty <laughs> and dumb, but pretty. <laughs> and he has no idea how that works. He just knows when he stands someplace going help, it generally works. He doesn't know why. It just sort of does. Usually, usually ladies, a few gentlemen have have, have approached. <laughs> he doesn't mind. He's not. He does not mind. As long as somebody's helping him, I think he doesn't care all that much. So yeah, you 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 sort of bit awake, and these two are still uh, kind of so yeah. He'll get up, 
probably rummaged through his bag for some for the few comic books he hadn't yet read and and sit in an armchair and just wait. Yeah, you you guys you guys wake up a couple hours later, find him reading Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> That 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 be being his number one favorite. <laughs> oh, that's an absolute delight to see that. You have a good you have good taste. <laughs> you're 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 ways off even the even the Avengers movie. You're a good seven years off that one. To, to... <laughs> This is still always the comics. Yeah. So you you probably get to in to lean into your personal space and going, you are a delight. <laughs> yeah, you have great taste. I need to introduce you to a few things, and I'm basically going to uh, produce something. I'm going to uh, produce a card magic card with oh the word flassify on it and just plonk that on uh, plonk that onto uh his <laughs> plonk that onto his comic and walk away <laughs> actually no better wet willy of the damned is what it's called it has just got like an elf getting wet willied by a zombie <laughs> 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 uh... i had that done to me once once. <laughs> just, just sort of just like, why? why, why? <laughs> okay. You can use it Tux as a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, just, uh, okay, text it in the comic, closes the comic, sets it down. Okay, that works. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have so much fun with you. You usually do. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play a game. Be nice to the poor we boy. We usually do. Union. Oh How god, it occurs it, 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 occur, it occurs it occurs to me it occurs to me that you you've you've been watching trashy movies in that time period. You've probably seen Saw by now. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get we're going to play a game, play a game. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> no no not that kind of a game like the ones in Vegas but better you have very bad experiences in Vegas <laughs> I don't think he has a poker face <laughs> no no oh. he doesn't I think you've heard this <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys had to bail him out of some significant financial issues in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were... Hey, remember that? Remember that time I literally lost my shirt? Or wait, no, wait, was that my shirt? Yeah, that was my shirt. <laughs> that was your shirt? And your that pants? was my shirt. Well, there was another time, but I think that was Atlantic City when I lost my pants. But I wasn't gambling. <laughs> that was one wild and crazy Yom Kippur. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where I even pulled that from, but okay, we'll run with it. <laughs> yeah, th th this is the Hi. point of this. You know, give character moments, speak, you know, noodle incidents. Feed us, please. <laughs> is is is. Is Yin going to subject him to the uh, lapsang? Yeah, I'm going to go and immediately start burning that, and and once I got it in a in a cup or two, I'm going to plonk one in front of him and, and plonk one near him and go. This isn't part of the game, but it's delicious. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it, no. it is. Given his background, he'll try anything. <laughs> yeah, it's that sort of roasty green tea. It's really good. So, yeah. He'll, he'll... Do I sip this or drink it? Whichever you please, so long as you do it carefully. 
Sé por eso, ok. <laughs> so yeah, he'll he'll just be very very careful and just sip it. And, and I assume Ketty is just watching this like this this is going to be my life for the next few weeks, great. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just that wee bit toasty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I like this. This is nice. Originally discovered by a bunch of bandits who set an entire... Well, didn't set the farm on fire, but after pillaging the shit out of it, they set the tea on fire because they thought they'd wrecked their yield. <laughs> they sold it to the Dutch, and then I stole it from the Dutch, but that was an entire <laughs> separate thing. I like the Dutch. They were fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Ketty can confirm the Dutch are still fun if you catch them in the in, in the right mood. The Dutch are quite good with herbs. <laughs> Why are they? Yeah, that's one way to put it. <laughs> At which point there is a knock, knock, knock. Enter <laughs> through yon dragon gate. And <laughs> Rafe is like, Golden Retriever... <gasps> Oh boy, because <laughs> he knows who that might be, and he's yeah. like, and, 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 and this this would be Kim with the uh, one of those those thermal bags to to keep things warm. And uh, I, as requested, I brought some um, local uh, breakfasts. Just uh, spread this out for you here. Don't mind me. Um, and just lays out these these. Yeah, this Moroccan bread and these little bitty pancakes and just little jars of jams and chutneys and a, a styrofoam container of uh, fried eggs that smell a little bit of cumin and uh, very minty smelling tea. Thank you, Miss Kim. Lights of variety. Well, this is what they eat for breakfast here. So I take it everyone slept okay? Very well. I didn't get any uh, any particular uh, texts from uh, anyone, so... I mean, that's that's well enough. So I'm assuming that nobody needed me in particular. No. Yeah, we didn't. It was. So, um, would you like to eat first, or uh, have me launch directly into it while you're eating? No, I think we've go for the launching. That'll we'll keep at least up. my mouth shut. Uh, your mouth shouldn't be shut if you're trying to put food into it. That would interfere. With... Keep me from verbalizing very stupid plans. But I'm the one with the stupid plans. Stupid uh, in, <clears throat> in no, my context. you're 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 the one with the uh poorly researched plan. She is the one with the uh, plans that largely devolve into make it be on fire. Oh. <laughs> yeah, mine are generally just pretty simple. I, mean, I, 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 I seem to recall that there was a, a bit of an issue in Bolivia. Flush. Yes, unfortunately, it wasn't just the fields that we were trying to take out of commission that wound up going foosh. Yeah, that was less intentional, but... Fire so... spreads. Yeah, I've clued into that, especially with how much closer together a lot of things are and ex days. and accelerants have evolved boy have they and 
the part of the reason that I'm very, very keen, we all are very, very keen in point of fact, not to have um, anything in the way of fire is, uh, what does Stuttgart mean to any, any of you? Katty, this one, this one is largely yours. Stuttgart, Germany, um, the capital of Baden-Württemberg, and the approximate, and which, which in it, in and of itself, is the region in which the Black Forest exists. Black Forest being, according to mythology, basically the spot where all the creepy shit happens. Kitty looks up much more attentively now. Do you want to explain Stuttgart to your bewildered-looking <laughs> companions, or shall I? Mm. Uh, for if 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 Ketty wants to explain for Rafe, uh, all of those stories about you know, witches in gingerbread cottages. They probably got their origins in, in the Black Forest, which is right by Stuttgart. A short distance from Stuttgart in Germany is a place known as the Black Forest and all manner of strange and often dangerous things come from there, to put it quite simply. Have you ever uh, been told the story of Hansel and Gretel? That one I'm familiar with. That was probably set in the Black Forest. Mm -hmm. ah. And most stories like it. Oh, you mean that kind of spooky, scary... Okay. Yes, now that things have been a little bit quieter on the socio-political front of late... Um, there's been a bit more leisure to explore some of the more uh, esoteric issues that can't be sent off to uh, more worldly authorities on the grounds that, um, well, honestly, you don't have to write reports. I mean, I do, but I know exactly where those go, and they those go to management and no further. But uh, armies and agencies and things along those lines have to make all kinds of reports, and the questions that those kinds of people would be obliged to ask, that it, it would be a problem for everyone, honestly, especially you. <laughs> I mean, we don't have that much to go on, to be entirely honest, because it's a little bit hard to separate the fact from the fiction, to put it politely. But um, there have been some missing persons reports, there have been some deaths that we've had to sweep under the carpet and make some adjustments to the uh, coroner's reports. Um, and pulls out uh, one of those old you know, file folder things, opens it up, and uh, one of the first things you get is uh, some kind of crime scene photo which involves an individual who's been torn up pretty badly by... And even, and Rafe is the one who predominantly knows this, because he's more the hunter of the group. No beastie has claws that big. No normal beastie has claws that big. Shit. Th those claw marks shouldn't be um, that big. Wow. Those claw marks probably just shouldn't be, but yes. Whew. Okay, mm -hmm. nothing. I don't know of anything that claws that big. And there was that polar bear back in 18 something. 
I don't remember the year. That 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 would that had that hurt. That's Ketty, can Ketty roll uh, history or uh, arcana slash religion, whatever is appropriate? Um, for mythology. Honestly, from his perspective, history is a a a mythology. So, yes, by all means, he can roll that. Oof! Wow. There are, twenty-seven. There, there are. Oh, no, look at look at his modifier though, as well, guys. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, no, the there are a lot of things in his experience that could make claw marks like that, and without actually looking at them, it, it, photos don't quite do it to narrow it down. But nothing mortal, nothing normal makes claw marks like that but I mean you're talking about the kinds of things that are seen predominantly as myth in the eyes of men uh, given the region and it could be just about anything um, quite possibly the uh, the, the being that uh, that got the, the whole Beowulf myth thing started um could be something imported. You have had contact over the centuries with people who have decided to um, move various uh, cryptids, for lack of a better word, to other places as you know to to start colonies of them to to hunt as game. All of those people have tended to be idiots. They've always been murdered by their own. Uh, by their own transported would be quarry and then these things because you know they're 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 not of the norm they're hard to kill and they don't you know they can adapt to their surroundings this could be manticore this could be this could be wyvern for all you know this could be some kind of swamp creature there are a lot of things it could be but you'd have to actually look at a mangled body to know for sure, but you do know it's not natural, you do know that it's in your ballywick, and you do know that you did probably take down the individual that decided moving it to the Black Forest was a good idea sometime in, like, the 11th century. And the 12th century and the 14th century and the 16th century and you've, you've been back a few times uh, people keep wanting to actually make the black forest more dangerous and you keep trying to stop them but there's only one of you and the world is very big and there's a whole lot of stupid in it just on that now. but what this does tell you is that given that it's happening on the outskirts of the forest, from what you can see in those reports, the ones that you left behind were just in their forest, and the only people that got eaten by them were, frankly, idiots. The, the ones that wandered in too deep and weren't properly prepared. This is happening too far on the outskirts, so something in there Either something in there is scaring them to, you know, the, the far edges where they're attacking people who are being cautious, or someone's calling them out because they should not be moving that close to human habitation. Nothing you know about gets that close to where humans are. Not without someone or something to drive them. Catchy, looks at that very carefully. It's difficult to put a name to it with only these photos. There are a number of creatures, but it is concerning this location, the outskirts of the forest. Something is moving in a way it shouldn't, not by, not in. Not 
without an, an additional force motivating it somehow. Well, we're wondering about the motivational factors, honestly, because we don't know if the missing children have been uh, part of that, or... <laughs> At which point, Rafe sits straight up at the mention of children it. to suggest a pattern. There have been a fair few uh, missing children from Stuttgart in the last two or three months. Um, the first few were obfuscated, um, divorced families that, you know, the, the child might have been taken by the parent that didn't get custody, things like that. But over the last few weeks, um, there have been more and there have been, they've been less explanation, um, generally grabbed on their way home from school. Uh, people have took more precautions, obviously, but the last few have been taken from their beds in the middle of the night. No sign of forced entry, but as we understand it, there are ways. There are many ways, and that's no mere beast. We don't know that it's connected, but it's something else that needs to stop either way. And that's why we'd be contracting you for this. You have the skills necessary to look into it. You have the skills necessary to deal with it if it's beyond what we can. You have the skills necessary to hide it. And if it attacks you, you will actually survive it. At least that's how management puts it. I'd rather you not get clawed, because I imagine it still hurts. And, uh, and management has kept local authorities in the dark? As much as they can. Um, I mean, you can't hide abduction to this degree, but we've been leading them away. The question was more in regards to whether it would be best to work with them or to avoid them. They both have their own complications. Yes. Um, honestly, I'd recommend neither specifically. Um, if you can ask them questions about their any questions you might need to ask them about their preliminary investigations can go through me. Um, I know I'm new at this and I, we don't generally go in for field work, but you're going to need some manner of liaison, so I'll be accompanying you, not into the Black Forest. I don't think I do very well of course not. in that sort of situation, but I have the technological skills that I think some of you lack, so any information that might be needed from the authorities in Stuttgart, um, we can get, I can get through clandestine means, and any, uh, I can look at their information without them knowing it. Oh, sneaky. Okay. And, but if you have any other means of getting information, which I understand you do, ways mm. of seeing what they wouldn't have anyway. So I'd honestly recommend just, the most you'll have to deal with are hunters. The few that got word that there's a, some kind of creatures at the edges of the Black Forest uh, the ones that are interested in a new trophy for their walls. They'll <sighs> be trying to hunt things that they're not equipped to hunt. And the last thing we can afford is for them to see you fight something. We oh. also kind of rather they not die, but oh. 
uh, your fee for this will be uh, commensurate on the actual nature and depth of the assignment. Um, your deposit will be 500,000 US dollars, which will handle in whatever means you uh, in whatever manner you see fit. Uh, usually for Mr. Ellison, it's uh, leaving as necessary in uh, luggage lockers, but uh, you still have not quite figured out online banking. <laughs> not good with stuff. I'm working on it, but it's it takes a while. Well, we are we are going to make things a little bit easier for you in that if you do accept this uh job, uh what we will do is set up an account and a credit card. I can do that. Because honestly it, we're getting we're getting to a point where uh fewer and fewer places are going to find taking cash easier. But you also need something of a, I guess, a burner card. We're going to have to change that once every few years because they're getting a little bit too interested in people's movement patterns by their spending habits, which is one of the main reasons we've been um, abetting your cash-only policies. But I suppose the question is, uh, will you be taking the assignment? Yes, he says without looking to the others. What the boss said, yeah. you said you said there were kids. I'm there. Yeah, we're about due for something like this. I'm in. All right then. Um, you'll have a. Uh, I'll, I'll need I'll need to arrange flights. I sort of penciled in some bookings, uh, but I need to solidify those. So um, if all works according to plan, we'll be leaving for Germany tomorrow afternoon. So you'll have a day in Morocco to prepare, etc. Um, again, anything you need from me, um, if you need me to bring dinner or any further information, you might ask me to dig up. Um, I mean, I can deliver dinner easily because I have to come back with tickets and things anyway. The rest of the police reports would be ideal as a starting point. Well, most of the information is in there. You've only looked at the top few bits and pieces, but I'll, uh, I'll dig up what else I can. Um, um, see if they've made any uh, headway in the investigation. But again, I can I can bring meal with the with the tickets and everything else and what arrangements I need to make for uh, various identifications because it's probably about time for a change for some of you anyway. Um, I'll let you handle whatever shopping you need to do for uh, Germany this time of year. You're in about late summer, so you're all right for that, which probably means it's fairly sweltering where you are at the moment, but eh. <laughs> not like any of you guys actually care. Um, and arrange for your various bits of payment. Anything else anyone can think? Of. I mean, obviously you have my number, but the more time I have, the better I can. Uh... You wouldn't happen to have anything, let's say, migratory patterns as tracked by researchers for any particular animals in the area, like, say, bears? We probably do. Because um, anywhere the bears are avoiding would be somewhere where these things would be. If they have the time to avoid the bears, but the problem is we're not going to have any... Um, we, we'll have the migratory patterns, but 
if anyone who's going in there, bears included, gets eaten, how is anyone going to know if bears were there? Well, if they have the patterns and anything that's tagged to the collar suddenly stops moving. You need to be careful of that, because what happens if they eat the collar? Well, then we have a whole new problem, but that's one we would be able to solve by being on the, by having boots on the ground. I'll see what I can find. That might be a little bit uh, more difficult because there's any number of people who might be tracking the migratory patterns of bears, and they might not be situated in Germany in the first place. That's fair enough. Bio, you know, biologists are a little bit strange as far as that kind of thing goes, but uh, I'll see what else I can find. I, I I, did, I admit, mean that as well, but also more in the way of uh, concrete things so that you don't have to be running around too much. You see, that's what I'm here for. I'm I'm here to do the, the running around so you can focus on the esoteric bits. And it is greatly appreciated. We'll come up with one thing or another eventually once there's been a bit of time to think on it. We'll t and you did give us your number, so All right, I'll be uh, I'll be back with dinner and plane tickets. Then. Yay! Mm -hmm. Where uh, where are we staying in Germany? Uh, we'll be booking you into a hotel on the aliases okay. that I will also be providing you when I come with dinner and plane tickets. Awesome. That helps to know. Thank you. Oh, rummage, rummage, rummage. Uh, pulls out wadge of comic books. Uh, this is your pull list for the week. Oh, hey, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yay. I'm set for the plane now. <laughs> and, and rummagers around and uh, very thin uh, parcel of swords for Suyin. Rare magic card of the time. <laughs> That's just... Yeah, whatever is just appropriately ridiculously pricey now. Well, yeah. I'll find something for later. Yeah, but it, enough, enough for sort of scree. <laughs> Up and open look. And just small kissy face. <laughs> and a grin. And she doesn't even wait for Ketty's response. She just drops a brown paper wrapped parcel on the uh, on the table nearest to Ketty and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I contend with any more of our nonsense. Mm. Uh, she she, 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 she just yeah. Um, basically, what you're getting is, um, funnily enough, it actually is relevant to your interests because it's a book of first edition um, old German myths. It's a very old book. Is it very useful? Ooh. I mean, you you can you can smell the old book. <laughs> So, okay, does anyone want to be doing any preparatory? Yes. This does not surprise me, given some of mm. your, uh, given some of your, your spell abilities. First, Teddy will take an hour to have a think, to fiddle with his guitar a bit and kind of Mull over whether there's any reagents he should be picking up at a traditional Moroccan market or asking him of, even though I know we don't necessarily track those as a game mechanic. Yeah, uh, well, we, we, kind of we, 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 track, we track some things, not so much others uh, mm -hmm. in this particular setting. As long as you do something appropriate, I'm not going to bother too much. I mean, Ketty is more runes and things like that. But while he might not need something 
specifically Moroccan now. In fact, he'd probably be better off with, uh, you know, in concert with his runes, some things that are more native to the area he's going to be looking for. But he may one day need some you know, various different, you know, spices and bits and pieces yeah, that you I could pick up from a Moroccan market. Keti is Keti has been around long enough to know that one way or another. Any little thing you can pick up from some place like this is bound to be useful. Yeah, exactly. So it might be worth it might might be worth a quick troll and market. You're you're sensible. You've got local currency. You. Mm -hmm. And other than yeah. that, he has a very neat looking divination spell. Okay, if you want to pop up the. Uh the spell card, because that's one that uh, Hazel's used like once, maybe twice. <laughs> uh, once it ended incredibly badly, if memory serves, and once actually worked out I'm, quite well. Yeah, not always sure yeah. what kinds of questions to ask, and then when I get told and I go to ask the question, it's usually too late to, for that question to be relevant anymore. And that in that time, I couldn't save you because your wisdom roll was shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so while he's at the market, he'll do that first, and also pick up some fresh meat, and then go up to the roof of their safe house, you know, draw some appropriate runes around him, and set the meat out on a plate, and okay. I just want to read the spell text. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I've I've pulled it up. We're googling. And basically, single question, and it's either going to be a uh, short phrase, cryptic rhyme, or omen. So. Mm, kind of puts a little bit of juice into the mute into the uh, magic circle, and then he looks up and intones Hugin, Munin, and waits. You don't see them, but you do hear the <coughs> and just about feel the weight of thought and memory on your shoulders. He wrinkles his nose a bit. I don't think ravens are particularly native to Morocco, so... <laughs> no, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the child taker? <laughs> okay, you're good. I have to admit, you're good. Mm -hmm. Hugin, as you tend to know by which shoulder they're on, goes by many names. The one you would want in the mortal is Thomas Jensen. His memory speaks up with if you follow that name some might have known it. From long ago. And then the, the, the little weights leave your shoulders and you hear the <laughs> of wings. Mm -hmm. mm, and he and it, uh, brushes away the runes and goes back downstairs. 
give that a bit of a think for a while. And so you, you see, you see Ketty go like upstairs with plate of meat, and comes back down, and just sits and does that thoughtful thing again. Mm -hmm. He's been doing that for like centuries. <laughs> It never stops being annoying. <laughs> I figure that's some um, information inbound in a while, so I'm going to, given the opportunity, take a meander yeah. and just sort of pass through any Morocco, pass through any underworld hidey holes I may have. You know all the underworld hidey holes. You can. <laughs> They're, they're generally in in this day and age, thieves can't turns up in graffiti an awful lot. Yeah, so there's hidden hidden in through. tags. Make my way through a few of those. Look for anything resembling weird imports into or out of Germany. Give me persuasion. You're getting some weird looks about weird imports out of Germany. You're just getting like you're in freaking Morocco. The, some of the shit we have is impressive, and you want German shit? Really? <laughs> Just get to say, hey, hey, don't be got your girl preferences. You want German? Go to Germany. <laughs> oh, I'm going. I'm just not there yet. What, do you want to properly accessorize? A little bit. And I'm just going to leave them with that as I walk away. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, outside of that, well, we're going to be in a forest, so I'm just tracking down camp and shit. Mm, and if I can't find anything reasonable, I'm just going to text... Our delightful new friend. Yeah, to be fair, the camping shit that you get in Morocco for points surrounding Morocco are not going to be overly useful for forest camping. Well, I'm gonna, I find a place that's selling what just describes camping gear. I see what it is and go, ah, well, texting it is that. And I'm just going to walk away from the store window, malleting on the texting mm -hmm. buttons. Okay, and you, you get understood. <laughs> ASCII heart. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Rafe? What is he doing while all this is going on? Rafe is not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Because uh, I've already been admonished <laughs> once about being out and about too much. So I'm like, just in case. Beca and Boss seems really, really busy and has already left and come back and done a thing and is now sitting there looking very thoughtful and I know not to bug them at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sort of... I'm watching the TV and Dude. keeping them out of the corner of my eye because I'm like, I want to ask them stuff, but I don't want to bug them. To be fair, uh, Suyin probably hooked up the, uh, the, the computer to the TV and so you can actually be watching the Baz Luhrmann, uh, Romeo okay, and Juliet. Okay, that works. <laughs> yes. and the thing is, you're actually getting it. This, this, this is actually, this is what they mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I'll just that's that's basically what I'm doing until boss is able to be spoken to, <laughs> as it were. Yeah. So so Ian, so Ian comes back in in that time. Just, Probably finishing up texting her ASCII heart and grumbling in in 
in Cantonese, uh, as uh, as Katie would know about uh, yeah. about the jackasses in the underworld, mm-hmm. with and, and just carrying like a Moroccan coffee or something from or or from like a nearby hotel Starbucks or something, just mm-hmm. grouching. <laughs> they don't do good green tea, but they at least never fail on the coffee. Yeah, you can get you can get some really good non Starbucks shit in Morocco, so yes. Yeah. It's like they 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 never really get the tea right, but coffee is the eternal glory here. <laughs> when you get it right. And yeah, you're 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 somewhere in the middle of uh, Leo DiCaprio doing the tempt not a desperate man. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Ah, you got to the good part. It makes sense. I like um, Recuccio. and 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 the one with the boots. I don't remember his name. <laughs> I forgot. But yeah, he's cool too. And of course, by this point, uh, Mercutio is dead, and you pro- probably, <laughs> pre- probably had you probably had poor Rafe you know, crying over that one. <laughs> yeah. So you still still got a couple of uh, tear marks. Just going, uh-huh. they killed Mercutio. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him. He 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 he. They killed him. He's not like us. They don't come back in Shakespeare. No, they <laughs> don't. I'm putting the phone away. <laughs> And I wanted to ask boss questions, but boss is doing the thinky thing, so I'm not asking questions. <laughs> Keddy eventually texts the, the name. Really <laughs> texts the name to Kim with a note that it possibly current pop up, possibly possibly current name, but also possibly has wider and more historical implications. And then he'll relax a little bit more and flip through the uh, miss book yeah, pro- probably well uh, probably well well that's the thing by this sorry but by this point Rafe is too into the uh, yeah. into the climactic yeah. bits of Romeo and Juliet to notice that he's actually yeah moved. okay that works <laughs> I'm gonna watch with Rafe though periodically glance over at Kenny to see if there's been any movement from um, state. Yeah, you 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 saw you saw him right around the point at which uh, uh, Claire Danes is gearing up to uh, to 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 suicide. Um, the, you 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 saw him sort of uh, do a text and then just pick up a book because he's he clearly not getting involved until uh, until Rafe is finished watching this particular tragic ending. <laughs> which probably has which probably has more more crying. <laughs> Finishing my coffee while Rafe is having a meltdown and, and making more Suchong, because I think we're gonna need that. And if there's any available like fridge, I'm fishing out appropriate tea sweets for that sort of thing. You don't really have a a fridge, but uh, you probably do still have some of the little pancakes and jams and chutneys left. If you want yeah. nibbles, gonna be, yeah, those those will then thus become the nibbles. And yes, and then eventually, you know, a glooming peace this evening with it brings it comes to the end of that, and then there's just Rafe going. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to. <laughs> Welcome to Shakespeare. <laughs> That wasn't one of the funny ones. I heard there were funny ones. Oh, there's definitely funny ones. Will made some amazing ditties. Yeah, but they're all hazy. And the words get weird. Midsummer Night's Dream is still funny. Okay. Words are not, it's hilarious. Okay, I'll give that a try. It's a guy with an ass's head for like a full third of it. To be fair, you're you're your farm boy, you would yeah. get donkey. Yeah, that's why I'm like Oh, oh <laughs> Okay. He hasn't been well, he's he was a farm boy originally. It's been a minute since he was 
on a farm on the regular. So it's, it took him a minute to go. As, oh, donkey. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the, the, the whole. And falls uh, in love with a Well, a queen falls in love with him because of it. A fairy queen, in point of fact. <laughs> Not that gets a head tilt. Point, point of order. Not just a queen, a fairy queen. Yeah, given he probably remembers uh, uh, bits of New York in the late 70s. I'm like, uh, I'm assuming you mean fairy in a different context. Okay. <laughs> oh, it can mean every context at once. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> I was started, I was getting it, now I don't got it. Don't do that. It's some, it, 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 every context being, because it's so silly, you could apply anything to it, and it would still work. And again, it's so Shakespeare, because, uh, come on, Ketty and Ketty and Suyin are both... Ketty in particular, to be fair, it's like Shakespeare made himself the... the basically, he became this legend of 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 grace, and, and it's all dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's like... It, Silly and it works. And for reference, every other sentence is a dick joke. To be fair, he did kind of get that during that whole bit where he's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he can you not take some occasion without giving that with that it just just that the way that particular Mercutio mm -hmm. does it just yep. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that's what he needs. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah, that got a good big hearty laugh. Yeah, uh, so it. now he's, but now he's getting, you know, what, all of them? Yeah, I'm like. Every single Shakespeare thing he ever wrote is like, at the very minimum, 60% dick jokes. The man really liked wedging the humor. I'm gesturing inappropriately again. Wham! <laughs> <laughs> Big ham-fisted face palm. And then finally, like, glancing at, remembering, probably, probably finally, like, pulling out of the Shakespeare talk and being like, oh, boss! Are you, you done with You would have fit quite in among the crowd at the Globe. <laughs> uh, that's British, right? No, I wouldn't. No, oh, really? you would. No. I guarantee yeah. you, you would. Okay. For fuck's sake, I was there at least once. And from, we all fit into the not globe. Not to digress. From 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 the doorway, uh, because she's given up on knocking, particularly because of the yelling at this point. Um, <laughs> the people in the penny seats used to throw buns at the stage if they didn't like the what was going on on it. And in <laughs> fact, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Shakespeare did change a few of his endings when they didn't play out particularly well with the audience. <laughs> Exit pursued by a. Exit pursued by a bear. Yes. Also, some hey. some men were born great. Some achieve greatness, and yet others have greatness thrust upon them. Mm. More inappropriate gestures from Suyin, which oh. is now taken, which is now taken as some vastly meaningful joke quote, but is actually a penis joke. <laughs> <laughs> I've flopped over onto the couch again. I, I have a much greater appreciation for Shakespeare. I still don't understand most of it, but I appreciate it a little bit more than I did before. If you have if you have good actors who actually bring out what it was intended to be, which was entertainment for the masses. I mean, they, they say it's supposed to be all highbrow, and that's why they acted all highbrow, but really, it was their Times version of this, and taps you, your stack of comics. I need to find some way to read more Shakespeare then, because I love this. There are there are some comics. Oh. Uh, okay. We'll we'll see I... what we we'll see what we can order for you. Oh, thank you so much. But but bus. So where we're going? Do you know the lay of the land yourself? Like you were saying, you were talking like you knew the place a lot. To like a point. 
the Black Forest is not so easily navigated. Okay. Then, Kim, can you, do you have, or can you, well, I shouldn't say can you get, of course you can get, it's you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to potentially doubt your abilities. Um, I'm just waiting for a question. <laughs> can um, you get us in, get information on, on the Black Forest itself, where we're going, what we're, what, from an environment, like, where are we going? <laughs> a bit more than just, it's the Black Forest. You'll, well, you'll, well, first you'll be arriving in Stuttgart and you'll have to get the lay of the land there a little bit. But um, I know these existed in your day and they exist now. There are things called maps. They are big sheets of paper with landmarks and bits and pieces drawn on them. And that will give you some indication of where you are going. Particularly if you have someone who is always aware of where, which way north is. Is glancing over at Ketty. Apparently, whatever file they have on him is remarkably uh, thorough. Mm. <laughs> and you're better off. You're better off picking up a map while you're in the area because they're bound to have. Uh, it's bound to be easier to get them because mostly you'll wind up for some place like the Black Forest or forests in general. You'd need more specialty map sellers in almost anywhere else and printing out a map is tricky in that you're limited by about the size of the paper that you have particularly given that i'm in the field so the reason that i'm saying this is that once you get to stuttgart you can buy a map of stuttgart to be able to navigate your way around the city and also buy a map of the Black Forest, and that way you're also solidifying your cover as tourists. Yeah, and if we really okay. want to go nuts with it, we can just say we're trying to do our own Survivor Man. <laughs> she, 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 that show is not... That, that, I don't like that show. Uh, she, she, currently, Kim is laying out you know, tagine and rice and various bits of Moroccan edibles. It smells spicy. Mm. Uh, that, to be fair, that's probably that. That that's that is Rafe's big thing about the twentieth and beginning of the twenty first century, because when he first started actually encountering food with spice, it was just. Oh my <laughs> god! It's a flavor bonanza. And I think you might not be cottoning on to which Survivor show I'm talking about, Rafe, but I'll, I'll show you. Um, as regards to the name that you texted through to us, um, we don't have anything specific on him yet we're doing a bit more of a deep forensics on his uh, on, on his identity because he hasn't existed for very long but um, we do have a record of a uh, Thomas Jansen arriving in Stuttgart about six months ago and there's some other strange blips from even even some of my colleagues are saying that this is a little bit um, outside the norm because they're getting some as far back as the late 1700s Kitty nods not surprised huh. in the least wow so where what is was there any sign of the context or the location in these uh, past centuries? Um, well, that's the thing. He would have he would have changed um, he would have changed some of his identities from that point of view. From um, from the late seventeen hundreds, we're seeing some. We don't have anything very specific, but it does seem to be the United States. Um, beyond that. 
uh, Stuttgart. He arrived apparently from London. Um, he checked in the local hotel, stayed for about three days. Um, there's no record of him having left. So he's probably still there, whoever he actually is. I expect so. But the fact that we're getting that name in and around the sorts of areas that uh, Mr. Ellison um, would have been in, we are looking into that. Uh, admittedly, I'm one of the few who's actually insisting on looking into that because it's not an uncommon name. But all things considered, it seems a little bit much of a coincidence. But the uh, fact that Rafe is racking his brain, being like, have I heard that name anywhere? But with his memory, yeah. <laughs> it's Basically. coming up with, coming up with mud. <laughs> so, well, given given the time frame, whoever it was that you would have uh, when you would have heard it before you found out what you are. So you know that kind of. Yeah, given, the, given you, given the, you, given you had to run after that, or at least hide. Yeah. Well, and also just given the trauma of all of that event, probably for the, probably kind of hazed the his memories of of a lot of things right around that time. So yeah, that makes sense. That actually brings a question: Is that ticking? Is that name setting off any uh, blips from things I would have caught browsing Underworld on the casual? Um, I mean, we generally keep an eye on what's been going on in the underworld. That name has not, but anyone with a remote modicum of sense wouldn't be using a name that they used in their original life and then one yeah. that they're using to casually travel. It's going to take some time to see if we can connect that alias to whatever alias he dropped in London to actually pick up yeah they can't all be as easy as john johnson doer of job at place <laughs> damn it <laughs> was it was it you i'm laughing at it's fox guy was an idiot eat your tajine and does actually just sort of scoop up a fork full of this and just shoves it into Suyin's face. It's this very delighted expression. <laughs> Please tell me you have sensible questions, Mr. Odinson. Or sensible comments or something that's not this. <laughs> just sense in general. Something that is not the weirdest form of flirting I've ever encountered. <laughs> Is so, that what you're doing? Never mind, I don't want to know. It's still difficult to tell what exactly this is, but that name, I can't promise you what is important. And well, glad to hear you've already found some indication i mean we'll we'll keep digging and see what else it's uh, what else it's connected to see if we can find a back trail um that's something i'm probably going to be uh, working on this evening and in my downtime while you're more in the field um our presence will elicit some manner of reaction i'm sure I, yes, I was actually going to ask about that because, uh, again, the management is not overly concerned about uh, this particular element, despite where I did mention it came from. So we are all booked onto the same flight. So if somebody is looking for any of us in particular, 
We're not going to escape notice. As long as everyone's all right with that, I can see what I can do about making some alternate arrangements, but it'll be a little bit tricky at this stage. Better that he knows. It'll force him to reconsider his efforts and hopefully distract him away from further victims, at least temporarily. Um, he'll be too busy trying to figure up out what you're up to to take anyone else. Thank you. Um, given what you said about New York when I was running around in there, should I get like some like sunglasses or a hat or something? I don't know. He's well, that's the thing, Mr. Odinson is saying that him knowing that you're here, if he is in fact well, connected to you, will bring him a little bit more out of the woodwork, whether that well, I meant more for everybody else. Because you said people were taking pictures and stuff. We're dealing we're dealing with the, the I mean this is this is necessaries and you've got you've got your you've got your aliases. It's unfortunate that you're um, that's the thing. It's not unfortunate that you're actually attractive, but it does make you stand out. Um, I wouldn't worry too too much about it. We can handle basics of that type. It's when you start getting into more when it's something from a company or an agency or an airport, someplace specific, we can handle that easily enough. We can't handle nearly a thousand people's Facebook pages very easily, is all. Okay. Stuttgart, isn't, Stuttgart isn't a huge tourist destination, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Okay. It's just when you're wandering off in the places that, particularly the places that you started from. Yeah. Maybe try hair dye okay facial hair change change it up every change it up every few decades you know okay maybe eyeliner <laughs> okay i mean i've been thinking blue there's, you know, there's a thing that can be done <laughs> Um, I would I would point out that trying to bleach your hair as dark as yours will damage it very badly. Yeah. I'd actually recommend um, red highlights. Ooh. Ooh. I can get some henna if you wanted to give it a short-term tryout. Sure, let's do this. Hmm. Oh no, I, I had a huh. out of character. I realize uh, my character actually has painter supplies marked down. Yes, but which no. <laughs> okay. You're you're not you're not you're not, a you're not going to use actual paint on anyone's. Uh, oh no 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 no! I just was going to pull out like a like a book and <laughs> start drawing so in real quick, and then like add blue. <laughs> to yeah, the no, you can. You, well, you can do that. I mean, the... yeah, that's totally what I was thinking about doing. Yeah. It's like, so yeah, so this conversation happens. That m m talking about the head, and I'm like, give me a minute. And rummage, rummage, <laughs> rummage. Pulls out, a, pulls out a notebook, flips it open. A few sketches go by, or at least you assume they are, because there's going by quick, so you can't really tell. Gets to a blank page and starts sketching quickly, like looking at Suyin, sketching, sketching, sketching. And then you guys continue, and I'll just be sketching. Um, yeah. Um, does Ketty have anything else he wants to ask, etc.? Mm, not that I can think of. Well, given that we're approaching that time, um, 
you've got uh, another week to consider any last minute questions so we'll we'll finish it up as uh, Kim giving uh, giving Su Yin some uh, quite nice deep, deep red highlights in, in the black hair it, it adds a, it adds a real gloss to her her hair tends towards the dull a little bit because she doesn't take care of it properly, but henna is also conditioning as much as anything else. So you get, you know, when the light hits it right, you get this bright, you know, this bright scarlet, and uh, it's shinier than it's ever been. And at some point, while uh, while Su Yin can't really move. Rafe just kind of slides the uh, the notebook in, in in into into view, and there's a there's a picture, a uh, sketch of Su Yin with with her hair all long and and everything, and with the blue going through it. So there you go, you got blue. That I do. And then she shows a mirror, and currently you've got red. The pirate grin comes back. Because <laughs> there's that moment of, this is the sort of face people saw when the, the branding situation was going on. Like, you have two fucking choices. One, <laughs> you hand me the shiny things and you live. Two, you fight me and you turn into a pit cushion, after which I threw you overboard, missing your eyes and your tongue. And that's and that's the grin that she's wearing when she's seeing her her hair just. Rafe just grabs the notebook because like last time he saw that stuff went on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting it away. <laughs> oh, I'm mean, gonna have to begin with this. Yes, it's you'll you'll need it redone once every few months, but your hair will be glossier and easier to manage. Yes, please. And, you know, failing that, and with a repeated admonishment to uh, text if you need anything, um, she says that she will come by to bring breakfast and pick you up for the airport uh, tomorrow, just so nobody ends up wandering the concourse again. Mm -hmm. Blush. <laughs> gives his hair a little ruffle. It's, I, I am... I am I am secretary, travel agent, and um, ancillary mother figure, I suppose. Which is funny, given how much younger I am than all of you. And very nice person. I try. They they decided that, um, well, I talked them into the idea that uh, maybe... Uh, bureaucrat hands off cold clinical was not the way to handle you all we are glad to have you miss kim very gives a little bow call or text if you need anything i will be with you for breakfast in the morning um traditional local again or that would be perfect mm-hmm as I've... long as you keep supplementing it with interesting green tea. And if she leaves, it's just, I brought the waffle iron for nothing. Clunk. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 yeah. wait, there's waffles? Hold <laughs> the phone! And we I'm can get waffles leaving. many places. You're, so, going, yeah. you're going to freaking Germany. But on the other hand, it, it, as, even as Ketty's saying that, you all realize that this is this is for this is for Rafe. This is this is old time Southern waffles. <laughs> That's why it's, it's like as Su Yin's like wait wait wait. Do, do, do. <laughs> and it's like um 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 um. It's, it's <laughs> that runs the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it gives look, looks back at the, 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 the you two. Just, I take it the comment about the waffle iron was, uh, it caught some people's attention? 
Yes, please. Quite so. Yes, please. Yeah. Very, very... For a man as big as him, very, very small. Yes, please. <laughs> His preferences first. I want to see this. I'm used to following Boss, because Boss is smart. Hmm. But I'm going to have to start following you, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Waffle, waffles, it shall be. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Closed door. Yeah. <laughs> you just see him sort of six six foot four himbo just going bounce, bounce, bounce. I'm going to follow Kim to the exit to the building and basically just discuss high tea type stuff. Because Hong Kong and I've been sort of think, given the, the waffles and then fully clicked into breakfast food. And then went from that to English breakfast, and then high tea, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. I mean, you. We won't be around here for tea time, but I can arrange something when we're in Stuttgart. Please do. And I, I, I do the little the finger sandwiches and uh, petit fool and all the rest of it. That'll be. Extremely worthwhile, considering you've gone out of your way to make everything as authentic as possible. I do my best. If you can, uh, if you can get a uh, favored time and place bits out of uh, Mr. Odinson, I would be very much obliged. I feel I shouldn't ask, but uh, I have been studying the places that he's been. Um, since his activation, for lack of a better word, but uh, I don't know which he liked best, so I may just have to keep throwing things at him and see what takes. But if there was guidance, that would be great. You keep throwing, I'll keep nudging, and we'll hit something akin to gold in record time. Have a good <sighs> and, and I'm going to get out of her way and head back yep. up. And it's just, it's just see in with with that look that mm, I have plans now. Look, just the yep. I'm plotting things, and Rafe is doing the I'm have waffles boogie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Comic book in hand, he grab one of the grab had, rummage through the pull list and grab the new Captain America. Just <laughs> couldn't wait for the plane. Well, he's he's got he's got a few, so. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> this that's, that's the great thing about pull wit lists. It's weekly. <laughs> yeah, he's it great. Uh, yeah. He likes his superhero stuff. It's a thing. Yep. Anyway. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I think I think everybody's about done for the moment. So we will meet up again next week, and I'm sure you'll have more things to ask me about at the time. And then uh, the fixtures will head to Stuttgart to settle into Germany. Actually, to be fair, Rafe probably does speak German as well, simply because he probably did get heavily involved in World War II. I was actually going to ask about Gasky a little bit about that as a, as a possibility off stream. But the way okay. yeah, the way I figure it the way I figure it for that one is that uh, Rafe actually decided to pose as a Canadian uh, because they got involved in the European theater right off the bat, and he you know, he clued in enough to go wait a minute. So we're selling to both sides, and we're not getting involved. Fuck that, I'm Canadian! <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder what, what the hell Sue Ying is doing this entire time. I'm sure we'll come up with something. This is what all these noodle incidents are for, because then I can actually build things around them. And if people, if some people leave some bits and pieces vague, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Ketty was uh, involved on the uh, on the Allied side in uh, in the European theater, mostly because Nazis. He was there. Well, that that, and it's like Nazis. What really? Yeah. <laughs> What is this absolute bullshit? You're, you're, you're seriously gonna try and take 
Thor's hammer or Odin or something of Odin's as a symbol. I'm going to throttle you now. Excuse me. We probably ran into each other. <laughs> Possibly literally. Yeah. Like, wham! <laughs> you! Like you! <laughs> Not sure if it was gun running, uh... stealing airplanes, or both. But I'm anyway. sure that, 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 that's a noodle incident we will have when we're not doing the setup run. So, but the, yeah. these, are, these are good conversations to have on stream so that I have a record of them later. So awesome. I will actually see you all tomorrow because it's yes. D&D night. <laughs> later, guys. Bye.